In this video, I'm going to get you filmmakers up and running quickly on your Nikon Z6. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, so last week I posted a studio tour of the television studio at my college. And I mentioned that I shot all that studio footage on the Nikon Z6, which is one of the cameras we have here at the college. So this week, I thought I'd give you a quick and dirty setup guide for filmmakers who want to start using the Z6. For those of you who are new to the Nikon Z series. Before we dive in, I should say I'm really pleased with this camera. I'm using the Nikkor Z24-70 f4s lens with it, which is lovely. And the 4K footage looks super crisp and the colors look lovely. Canon still has my vote for the best mid-priced mirrorless 4K camera though, mostly because of the unbelievably good autofocus, but this Z6 sure gives it a run for its money. Not only that, I hear the update, which I haven't done yet, improves the autofocus. All right, let's dive in. First, charge your battery and throw it in the camera. One thing to note with the Z6 charger is that the plug part here sometimes comes off the brick when you pull it out of the wall. So always check to make sure you've got the plug part too when you unplug it. So the battery. It only goes in one way. Look for that little arrow. Next, attach your lens and turn the hood around. By the way, you shouldn't be transporting your camera with the lens attached. I've had more than one lens repaired because I got lazy and kept it on there, so don't do it. Lastly, stick an SD card in the camera. The Z6 uses CF Express Type B cards. To insert it, there's a little bump out on the right side of the camera body. Slide it towards you to access the card slot and look for the little arrow on the card to make sure you're putting it in correctly. All right, let's turn the camera on. The power button is on the right. Next, let's put your camera in movie mode. That button is on the right next to the viewfinder. And lastly, let's put your camera in manual mode because professionals shoot in manual and you should too. The selection wheel is on the left. Push this button in the center and turn the dial to M. If you get the folder message, press the shutter down, which is here to clear the message. You can also press that shutter button if your LCD goes black, it'll bring it back. Okay, let's tilt the LCD so you can see it properly. Do this by grabbing it from the bottom. And before we change any other settings, see how when I move my hand in front of the viewfinder, it turns off the LCD screen. If your Z6 is doing this, you want to turn this feature off because it's going to drive you nuts if that LCD is going on and off while you're using it. Do so by hitting this little button on the left side of the viewfinder until it says monitor only. Okay, let's set you up for shooting some video. Hit the menu button in the lower right. To select menu items, you can use the wheel right above it. Press left, right, up, down, and hit OK in the center when you have the item you want. Or you can also select your menu items directly from the LCD screen. First, let's go to the Z6's movie menu. It's the third option down and it looks like a little movie camera. Hit OK. And let's choose your frame size and rate. All the projects here at the college are currently shot in 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, and the frame rate we shoot in is 24p. So that's what I'm going to choose. Next, make sure you're getting the file type you want. At the college, we're using MP4s, so I'm going to select that. Next, we're going to skip down to the white balance section. White balance, very briefly, is a way to help your camera capture accurate colors. By setting your camera's white balance, you can help it figure out what white should look like, and hence the other colors. White balance is usually dictated by the type of light that's in your shot. That being said, the best thing to do is to manually white balance once you have all your lights set up. Maybe I'll do a separate video showing you how to do that on the Z6, but for now, let's just use one of the presets. To do this, if you're shooting inside, keep scrolling down until you see incandescent, or if you're outside, you can choose direct sunlight here. If you're just starting out and you'll be running and gunning inside and outside, I might suggest selecting auto, but don't get too used to auto. Learn to manually white balance. All right, let's go back. To get back to the previous menu, you can hit the little arrow in the upper right. 
Next, you want to select your focus mode. Keep scrolling down until you see focus mode. Hit OK. If you're shooting video, you want to be in autofocus. Your choices are single AF for stationary objects. When using single AF, you will need to press the shutter halfway down to focus, then it locks focus. Continuous AF is for moving subjects. The camera focuses continually as long as you have the shutter pressed halfway down. The only time you really want to use this is if you're trying to save battery power by not having the camera continuously autofocusing. And lastly, full-time AF will continually focus in response to your subject moving. I suggest choosing this. This here is your focus point. It's what the Z6 is focusing on. Next, you want to set your area focus mode. That's how big this little red box is. So go into area focus mode and let's go up to single point AF, which will give you a nice small box for your focus point. If you want to move your focus point while you're shooting, hit the I button on the right to bring up your info and look for the little finger icon here on your screen. Hit it and make sure you have touch AF on selected. Touch AF will let you move the autofocus point right here on the LCD screen. Lastly, let's make sure your audio is going to come in at a reasonable level. Scroll down to microphone sensitivity and choose auto. Now, if you have a really quiet subject or a really loud one, say you're filming a band and it's blowing out your audio, you can choose manual and then bring it really low or really high. But for now, the auto setting does a nice job of getting you what you need. And by the way, you should be using an external microphone. Plug it in here and mount it on the hot shoe. All right, that's it for the menu settings. Hit the menu button until you exit. Now you're ready to shoot. Let's talk about your f-stop and your ISO settings for a minute. Again, I'm assuming that you're a beginner and you don't really know what you're doing when it comes to f-stop or ISO, etc. So here are my suggestions. I like to shoot with a nice shallow depth of field, aka blurry background, subject in focus. So on my LCD screen here, I'm going to choose a low f-stop. F4 is as low as I can go with this particular lens. Touch it to get F4, then hit the curvy arrow to exit. And I also like to start with a low ISO to get the least amount of noise or grain on my image, so I'm going to inch that down. And lastly, I want to select a shutter speed. The lower you go, the more motion blur you get. So you want to balance your ISO number and the shutter speed so that you don't have a lot of grain and you aren't getting a ton of blur. So let's choose a reasonable shutter speed. If you have artificial light, you can usually get away with a really low ISO and you don't have to sweat the shutter speed too much. But if you're trying to find a balance, push the ISO down, find a shutter speed that doesn't look too dark, and if you're getting a ton of motion blur, inch up the ISO. Or at least that's how I do it when I'm doing a quick setup. Lastly, watch your histogram while you're shooting, which is right here. The histogram measures exposure. If you want a little more information about the histogram, check out my other video on this, which I will link below. Make sure the mountain isn't squished all the way to the left or all the way to the right or off the top. The image on the LCD should look properly exposed and the histogram mountain shouldn't be pushing off one side or the other. Okay, so let's record. The record button is up here by the on off. To play back your clip, hit the play button in the upper left. To adjust the volume while you're playing it back, you can hit the positive or negative magnifying glass by the menu button. To delete a clip, hit the garbage can twice. And lastly, once you're done with your shoot and you need to get your clips into the computer, plug your USB-C cable in here, the other end into your computer. And on a Mac, go to Finder, Applications, Image Capture, and you should see the Z6 in the menu on the left. Select it, select a destination, and download all of your shots. And that's it. How was that for quick and dirty? All right, let's do that tip. I've got several cameras, and Lord knows I can't remember every single thing about each one. That's why I always download the user manuals to my phone, and you should too. Find the manual online, download the PDF to your desktop, and airdrop it to your phone, so that the next time you're shooting away in the field, and you can't for the life of you figure out how the heck to do that thing, you can whip out your phone and figure out how to do that thing. Super quick. Easy peasy. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.